Entropic and GitHub Copilot just made an announcement on this partnership where they are bringing the Cloud 3.5 Sonnet models, the newer ones, into GitHub Copilot. This is very exciting because what we have seen recently is a lot of adoption of these code editing tools such as Cursor that have very deep integration with LLMs such as Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, O1, and many other language models. This announcement was made today during GitHub Universe. Let's go through some of the details here. This is a very short announcement and I'm going to take it for a spin just to test it and see what it feels like. So starting to Today, the new Cloud 3.5 Sonnet begins rolling out on GitHub Copilot. And again, it's the Cloud 3.5 Sonnet for coding. I do believe that Cloud 3.5 Sonnet is really great at creative tasks, but it is also a very strong model for code generation. So it only made sense that Cloud 3.5 Sonnet would make it eventually to GitHub Copilot, which is already very popular among developers. In particular, you'll be able to use it in Visual Studio Code and GitHub.com. And it's bringing those clouds coding capabilities to a very, very large community. So this is huge for Anthropic. It's huge for GitHub Copilot because they are sort of giving you more options beyond the GPT models. And I think the competition is really important here because these models are getting much, much better at coding. In fact, the Cloud Superfast Sonnet model, which is the upgraded version, which recently was released by Anthropic, claims to outperform all publicly available models on the SWE bench verified. This is a very challenging coding benchmark, which a lot of companies are now using, including OpenAI. So this one is about measuring how models solve real-world GitHub issues. So it says here it achieves the top score in its class, 93.7, on human eval as well. So these are the use cases here. It says with context about your entire code base, you can use Cloud to profess on it on GitHub Copilot to write production-ready code. I think that's going to be one of the bigger use cases. But I must say, and I must warn, when you're using these language models in these environments, environments like Copilot or Cursor and so on, you will notice that they are actually quite limited, but the models are getting better. And so I do expect that there's going to be a lot of like best practices better integrated into these models. And so you'll be able to use them for production ready code for sure. The bug with inline chat, this is going to be one of the features I'm going to highlight. In fact, this is probably one of my favorite features inside of Cursor. And I've been using Cursor a lot because of this. There's so many different things that you can do inside of Cursor and it's all enabled via this chat feature. Okay. Create tests for implementation. I think unit test generation is also a huge use case. This is something I've been talking about for a very long time. I can only imagine how easier these tools are going to make it to create tests, right? This could be a super tedious task. And I think it can be automated to some extent. And I'm sure a lot of people will be experimenting a lot with this. Understand code with contextual explanations. Hover over functions or highlight blocks. Also, reading code bases could take a lot of time as well. Understanding code bases. So the idea is to help you with that. These models can understand very long context and can make sense out of an entire code base if that is something that you would want to do as well. All right. So this is just more details about getting started. If you want to learn more about all of these integrations that GitHub announced, you can check out your blog right here. And then there's also some documentation. So let's go over to the example I want to showcase here. So I'm inside of VS Code. I use VS Code a lot. In fact, I switch between VS Code and Cursor a lot. And there are a lot of similarities. And so what I want to show you here is how you can use this chat feature in particular. So I'm going to close this and there is a nice shortcut for you to enable this chat mode. And this is the feature I'm going to highlight here. Now, I do already have Copilot installed right here. You need to have Copilot installed. So that's the first thing. Just make sure that is enabled for you. And after that is enabled, then you can use these functionalities. So it's going to be like an extension that you need to add. So what I have here is a very simple project. So this is the code base for our prompt engineering guide. Many of you may know this one, and I regularly have to update this. In fact, I update this using code. This particular project, our website, has a lot of content stuff that I do with it. So in fact, I do mix code and content creation a lot with this project. And it's a very unique project from that point of view. The chat features, they help me a lot, especially inside of Cursor. So I actually want to test it just to see how good this chat feature is that has the ability to use Cloud Superfast Sonnet. I know Cloud Superfast Sonnet is a pretty good model. It is my default model within Cursor. So I actually want to embed a YouTube video that I just uploaded on YouTube recently, and I love integrating these here. Again, this project here is a Node.js project. And so inside of here, I have also prompts. So this folder here. And inside of this folder, 
I also have some examples of, for instance, what a YouTube embed might look like. So I have it open here. So this is how I usually embed YouTube videos inside of these guides. So I actually want to provide them all this context as part of context, this example. And then I just need to provide it the YouTube link. And hopefully it can do that integration for me very easily. So I'm actually going to hit here Shift Command I. And that enables the chat feature right here. So this one says edit with Copilot. And I can actually start to chat right here. So because I had this already open, this particular file, react.en.mdx, you can see that it's provided as part of the context right here. Now I could also add more files to this. I could do it manually, or I could just go look for it using this pong sign right here. So this pong sign, I can just go and say youtube.md. And so that's the file right here that I'm adding, or I could do it this way as well. So I could go here and then say youtube.md. I don't need to do it anymore right there. So that's how you would add these files right into the context itself. And now I can prompt the model. So I need to go and get my YouTube video link. This process is a lot faster. I am taking my time here just to show you how I go about doing this, but it's usually a lot faster. This is the video I actually want to embed. And this is about React using Flow ICI. Do check out that video if you like to learn more about it. But I'm going to actually copy this link right here. So I copied the link and then I'm going to head over back here. So I'm going to prompt it here and ask it, please embed the following YouTube video to the React guide. Use the, I'm going to provide the link right here. I'm going to paste that. Use the following format provided in YouTube that MD. So that's going to be this example here, which is this one right here. So I do this task a lot. So that's why I have this within the context here, because I wanted to use a specific size. I have different parameters here that I'm passing to this, right? To make it as optimal as possible for my website. I don't want it to use other heights or anything like that. So I'm just going to go and send this now and let's see what GitHub Copilot does. So look and see here that I'm using Cloud Superfast Sonnet, right? If you click on this one, you will see different models. So we only have the GPT models and then the O1 Mini as well. So it's great to see this Cloud Superfast Sonnet. I believe Gemini 1.5 is also coming to this. So I'm very excited about that because those one will have like image understanding capabilities and all these type of capabilities that for us at least it will be very useful. You can see here it says, I'll help add the YouTube video embedded to the React guide. Here's what needs to be changed. And then it says react.en.mdx. So this is the file which I did provide in context. And it says, add the YouTube video iframe after the introduction paragraph and before the how it works section. So it's actually proposing that. I could have been more explicit about that, but it doesn't matter. I just want to see what it did. So I'm going to click on this one here, and then this is what it did. So it actually introduced this green text here. It's a little bit different from cursor. If you have used cursor, actually cursor shows you the changes here in code block where you can go and apply. So this one is a little bit different. You just click on this and it's showing you and it's directly embedding this. So you will see it in green here. I usually also put these videos at the top, but I think this location is totally fine as well because we we'll would like to go through some of the theory and motivation behind React prompting before we actually go into an example. We could also put it towards the end if we think that's also beneficial. I'm going to leave it there for now. I know this is the code that I wanted because I can see that it's using this example exactly, right? With all the different parameters right here, it's using exactly my own settings that I want. I want a specific set of settings. So I'm going to actually go and test that. So what I'm going to do is I can accept here or I could accept here. So I'm going to accept the code. You can see that now it's not in green, but it's highlighted in green this way. So I'm going to save that. And I'm already running this project on a server. I'm inside the project here, local host. I'm going to go to React prompting. Our React is right down here. And let's see if this actually worked. Again, this would typically be a lot faster, but I'm taking my time just to show you. So we see the video here, and this looks like it embedded the video really nicely. So that looks good to me. And I'm probably ready to just ship this now. So it did do this really nicely, which I really like. This is a very simple task. I do this in Cursor as well a lot. But the idea here was to test whether it actually took into consideration some of these example or templates that I'm using here to integrate these YouTube videos. I will also be doing a follow-up video because I'm actually working on a course on how to use Cursor and all these advanced functionalities within Cursor for similar things like this and for things like unit test generation, all these like amazing things that you would do as a developer. So that's something that's coming very soon. I will do a YouTube video comparing also 
cursor and compiler. I think there's a lot of similarities here, and I really want to see if there are some distinctions in terms of capabilities, because at the end of the day, they are the same model, but they're definitely approaching this a little bit different, which I think is fascinating because every tool will have a preference in how they want to enable this technology to their developers. Do try it out, especially this chat feature, and try it out for different things. We'll be doing more videos about this. We are very excited to use this in our own company. Do stay tuned for some of those upcoming videos. Thank you for watching. Consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I'll see you all in the next one.